Kosomo, aged 43, has been stuck in traffic jams for an hour and a half. Since the end of the dictatorship, the number of cars and motorbikes has increased dramatically. Look, the motorbikes are coming like that, yeah? So I have to be careful, yeah? The road is very narrow, and that's a bucking area on the right side too, so we cannot drive well, yeah? Cosimo is a guide and is looking to find a new tourist circuit. While the military were in charge, most of the country, with a few exceptions, was out of bounds to foreigners. I'm going to is a northern country. What the tourists never been there yet. Now it's become better. We can have the permission and we can go. He'll travel about 500 kilometers along one of the worst roads in Southeast Asia. It crosses the north of the country, the Chin Mountains, to reach Ridil Lake on the Indian border, the final destination. It's pure adventure, as Kosomo has no idea what lies ahead. Squeeze in next to him in the dead man's seat is Nini, the co-pilot. Wait, the motorbike's heading straight for us. A bit more. Not now. Okay. Driving in Burma requires a cool head, as only the passenger can see what's coming. There's a car. And all because 40 years ago, the Burmese dictator decided, on his astrologer's advice, that everyone would no longer drive on the left, but on the right. You see, the wheel is uh, on, my, on my right side. I have to pass. I have to pass this truck up from the left, but I cannot see. So I need someone. If I have to drive alone, alone myself, yeah, like that, I cannot. It's very dangerous or take long time. There's a car. There's a car. The dictator's astrologer forgot one detail, however. The cars are imported from Singapore, which drives on the left. OK, go slowly now. We can overtake. There's nothing. Is that OK now? Come on. OK, come on. There's nobody. Now. It's taken almost 40 minutes to get past the truck. In six hours, Kosomo has covered just 60 kilometers. He wants to look at an elephant reserve, which is at the end of this small road. No asphalt here, just a dirt track, and there's trouble straight away. Nini has to check the depth. I have to follow him, yeah? Yes. He showed me where to drive. The monsoon is just beginning in Burma. It lasts three months from June to September. We are lucky now because no, no rain, dry, less water, so that yeah, we can keep driving on this road, yeah? But their luck soon changes. 300 meters further up, a small brook has become a large river. Is there a lot of water there? You mean it comes up to the waist? Yes. Really? Can my car get across? I'm not from the village. Ask that man there. Can my car make it? Yes, this way. Where? Can you guide me across? And today we have to do quicker because it's look raining sooner or later because there is a cloudy a lot. So if we have the rain later, it might be have more water problem. Torrential rain will make the river impassable. But it's the only way to the elephant sanctuary. 
Kosomo has no choice. How much is it for the motorbike? 20 centimes. And for the car? For the car? Ah, oh, well. <laughs> we'll cross on the rafts, but they're just taking motorbikes for now. The raft's pilots have to go in the water. If the current's too strong or if it's too deep, they won't cross. He sends out his co-pilot to scout ahead. Are there rocks below? Nini, are there rocks? No, it's sand. It is less water, but the problem is the ground. The ground is a no stone. It is only sand and muddy. So sometimes, if you lose the way, your car can be stuck inside. We cannot move at all. Two locals offer up a solution. They know the terrain and also know there's a narrow passage. It's the only place where the water is not too deep and the ground firm enough to bear the weight of a car. It's okay, yeah, now we have the four wheel, it's working well. This, rain, this weather, this road, yeah, we need to have the four wheel, otherwise uh, we can't do it, yeah. Cosimo is not far from the elephant park. There are about 10,000 elephants in Burma. Here, the animals live peacefully alongside man. Yet sometimes, something snaps and the situation can change in an instant. One elephant is causing panic among the farmers. Cows, look at that, the scale of the elephant. So the cattle over there, they took, they pulled the cut away. They're trying to run away from the elephant, near from the elephant, and you see, it's an accident. Half of all the elephants in Burma are domesticated. Inside Kasapa Park, run by the government, there are about 30 living more or less freely. Each elephant has its own name. That one, the little one, is two years old. The other is 34. It's a young female. She's called Silver Moon. Elephants and their drivers have an almost mystical relationship. We take very good care of them. They get a medical inspection every month. These elephants are calm and friendly, but they used to be very wild. We feed them. And they used to hide out deep in the jungle, so it was hard to get them all the way here. They used to attack humans. While most Burmese elephants work in the forest, those in Kasapa are lucky. For decades now, they have been protected from modern civilization. They said yeah, they never seen the tourists. And this is what I like, yeah? Then I would like to bring some tourists in here and I hope, yeah, more and more tourists in here. How I'm happy people communicate to the other people too. If Kosomo gets to bring tourists to the Kasapa Reserve, the elephant's peaceful existence will likely change. <laughs> the 
a mist has come down on the small road in the Chin Hills Mountains. Cosimo is just 20 kilometers from his final destination. He can barely make out the edge of the ravine, not to mention the road made slippery by the constant rain. We cannot see uh, what's, uh, what the cart is coming from the other side because uh, some of the tents are really, you know, helping tan and uh, we cannot see from one to another side, yeah? A kilometer further on, one driver was nearly killed when his truck almost fell into the ravine. I was making my turn right here when the clutch and the brakes gave way. The engine stopped suddenly. And that's why, well, that's why my truck ended up like this. I skidded and almost went over the edge. At the summit of the hill, the mist is even thicker, and the danger can come from up above. The ground is not really strong enough, and the land can be fell down, and the car can be uh, have been the accident too. Like convicts in a chain gang, the repair crews attack the rocks with sledgehammers. It's a titanic task, as just a few hundred meters away, the mountain has spilt over onto the road, which is now completely blocked. Ooh. Ooh, look, 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 look. The road is blocked. Yeah, you see the cars are over here. Those, this kind of the cars are blocked. And on the other side too, some of the cars, our cars are coming here. And they all will have blocked. Yeah. A few diehards try and get through. Some of them on two wheels. They never know how long they have to wait for. So everybody is taking the risk. Cosimo is one of the last to get through. The mountain fog is finally lifting. Towards late morning, Cosimo reaches the village of Zozan. It's the last stop before Redil Lake. The villagers are surprised. It's the first time they've seen foreigners. So this area has uh, seemed to be opened very recently, so that yeah, they, they don't see tourists or they never seen the tourists. So what I think is uh, if we can bring the, some more tourists, yeah, I think yeah, people will be happy to see. But the only problem is uh, how to be here. The road is uh, really difficult. <laughs> and there's one more obstacle to opening the region up to tourism 
Beyond the village, the road is a thick carpet of mud. You have to move the plates. We've already tipped over several times, three times, I think. Luckily, we weren't hurt. We raised the truck back onto its wheels, and then we carried on. We do whatever it takes. The iron plates can go under the tyre so we can get through. We'll reposition them and drive on. Take the plate now. The plate, put it on this side. The gearbox is broken. We can't get our four-wheel drive to work. We'll have to take off the ball joints and reposition them properly. And then we'll be off. That's how we do things here. We fix things over and over again, and then we can drive. <laughs> With his four-wheel drive, Cosimo manages to get through. Redil Lake is only 20 kilometers away. But the further he goes, the worse the conditions become. And now, it also threatens to rain. If it rains, how's the road? <laughs> well, you just have to cope. In the end, Cosimo gives up. The road is going to be getting worse and worse, yeah? Okay, I decided, yeah? I think yeah, it's not better to go to the lake, yeah? Because I'm not sure about the road, how bad it is to... Now we are going back to the somewhere to stay. We are not going to the lake. Sorry for that. Cosimo and his co-pilot didn't reach their objective. But maybe it's for the best. It was Mother Nature's call. And at least some of Burma's treasures will be preserved for just a little longer. <laughs>